Dear friends, welcome to Inquest, India's Acts and Policies series. Under this series, today we will be discussing about Wildlife Protection Act 1972. These videos are useful for your UPSC, KPSC and all other competitive exams. Let's see the contents of today's discussion. Number one, what is Wildlife Protection Act 1972? Under this act, there are six schedules. We need to understand each and every schedule with complete details. Next, we need to understand the constitutional provisions for wildlife under which we need to understand various amendments and articles that are related to wildlife. Next, we need to understand the authorities appointed under this particular act and then uh, the salient features of this particular act. And there are various uh, bodies that are uh, constituted under this particular act. And we need to know the functions of the same. And finally, the list of animals, plants, birds that are put under different schedules of this particular act. Now let us start understanding what is Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The Wildlife Act 1972 is an act of the Parliament of India. So this is actually the act of the Parliament of India and this is enacted for a reason. And the reason is to offer protection to plants and animal species. Now what kind of plants and animal species that it offers protection? So it offers protection of wild animals, birds and plants in the larger context. Now, what was there before 1972? Before 1972, India had only five designated national parks. And today, as you all know, we have quite a good number of designated national parks in India. Among other reforms, the Act established various schedules. As I told you before, there are six schedules that are established under this particular Act. And the purpose of these schedules is to offer protection to plants and animal species. And there are a few schedules that come under this particular Act. Those schedules actually prohibit hunting and harvesting of, of special species. And this is what is the broader context of this particular act. And this act actually extends to the whole of India. I mean to say this is applicable to whole of India. And it has six schedules which give varying degrees of protection. Now let us start understanding each and every schedule in complete details. Schedule number one. What it covers? It covers endangered species that need rigorous protection. Obviously, endangered means they are very close to, you know, nearing extinction and their numbers will be very, very minimal. So that is the reason why they need rigorous protection. The species are granted protection from poaching, killing and trading. So nobody can poach, kill or trade the species that are put under this particular schedule. And if a person is uh, found to be doing so, a person is liable to harshest penalties for violation of the law under this particular schedule. So in the last part of this presentation, I will have given all the species that are put under this particular schedule. So if any person is violating uh, the clause of this particular schedule, attracts the severe or the harshest penalties. And let us understand schedule two. So here we need to you know, concentrate upon part two of the schedule two. This actually provides absolute protection once again and offenses under this particular uh, uh, you know, schedule, uh, which actually attracts highest penalties once again. So what we need to remember here is schedule and, and part two of the schedule two attracts the harshest penalties. Now let us understand what is there in Schedule 3 and Schedule 4. So these are also protected species, but the penalties are much lower compared to what it was there in Schedule 1 and Schedule 2. And Schedule 5, so these are actually animals that are legally considered as vermin. Vermin in the sense, so any uh, species that actually causes disease to the human beings and also they can destroy the agricultural crops, they are called as vermin. So these vermins are actually put under Schedule 5 and they may be hunted freely. So, you, you know, the hunting is uh, uh, possible of those particular species that are actually put under Schedule 5. Now, what is there in Schedule 6? So, in Schedule 6, we actually talk about plants. They are specified endemic plants that are prohibited from cultivation and planting. So, nobody can actually cultivate or neither they can uh, plant if the plant species is put under Schedule 6. So, these are the details of all the schedules. Now let us understand the constitutional provisions for wildlife. Now, under this, we need to understand one amendment and two articles. The amendment is the 42nd amendment and article 51A and article 48A. So let us understand what is 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1976. So any matters that are related to forest and the protection of wild animals and birds, it was actually in the list, uh, you know, state list before. So as you all know, we have three lists. One is central, one is state, and other one is 
concurrent list. So any matters related to forest and protection of wild animals and birds, it was there actually in the state list. And according to 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1976, all these matters are put under concurrent list. Now it is the equal responsibility of state and central government to protect uh, forests and protection of wild animals and birds. And now Article 51A of the Constitution states that it shall be the fundamental duty of every citizen. So this article talks about the fundamental duty of every citizen to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests and wildlife. And Article 48A in the Directive Principles of State Policy, this mandates the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country. So what we need to remember is Article 51A is related to the citizens of the country and Article 48A is related to the responsibility of the states. So these are all the constitutional relations with respect to the wildlife. Now let us understand the authorities appointed under this particular act. So the actually the central government is actually entitled to you know appoint the authority you know basically the central government appoints the director of wildlife preservation and assistant director so first and foremost it is the director and there will be many assistant directors and under which there will be subordinate directors so three designations here director assistant directors and subordinate to the director and the state government, so central government uh, can appoint these three people and the state governments appoint a chief wildlife warden who heads the wildlife wing of the department and exercises complete administrative control over protected areas within a state. So uh, they, the state government is actually entitled to appoint such chief wildlife warden. They can execute complete administrative activities within the state and the state governments can also are also entitled to appoint wildlife wardens in each and every uh, you know district so in each and every district the state government has the authority or entitled to appoint wildlife wardens as well so this is what is the authorities appointed under this particular act now let us understand the salient features of the act first feature it prohibits the hunting of any wild animal specified in schedules 1 2 3 and 4 of the act so any species that is put under schedule 1 2 3 and 4 of this particular act they are prohibited from hunting but there is an exception exception is a wild animal listed under these schedules can be hunted only after getting permission from the chief wildlife warden of the state if so we have to get or seek uh, permission from the chief wildlife warden but there are conditions again condition number one it becomes dangerous to human life or to property including standing crop on a on any land so if any animal is uh, you know causing or if it is dangerous to human life or to the property or to the crops so then with the prior permission of uh, chief wildlife warden it can be hunted and the second uh, reason is if it is disabled or suffering from a disease that is beyond recovery so this is kind of uh, you know providing euthanasia so if any animal or a species that is suffering from incurable disease and if it is having a greatest suffering then with the prior permission of chief wildlife warden it can be hunted once again so with this let us understand feature number two it prohibits uprooting damage collection possession possession or selling of any specified plant uh, from any forest land or any protected area so from any protected area or from any forest land this act prohibits uprooting we cannot pluck any you know species of plants we can neither we can uh, cause damage or collect or possession or selling is prohibited once again there is an exception uh, once again there should be you know permission sought from uh, cwlw that is chief wildlife warden however may grant permission for uprooting or collecting a specific plant for the purpose so what are all the purpose for which it is permitted one is for the purpose of education second is for the scientific research and third is for preservation in an herbarium or if any person or an institution is approved to do so by the central government so only under these conditions the uprooting damage or collection possession no, not selling so only uprooting or collecting is uh, you know allowed on prior permission with chief wildlife warden so salient feature number three, the central government can constitute any area as sanctuary. So it is the, uh, you know, the central government is actually entitled to 
you know constitute any area as sanctuary but there are conditions again provided the area is of adequate ecological faunal floral geomorphological natural or zoological significance so only under these significances the central government can constitute any area as sanctuary the government can also declare an area including an area within the sanctuary as the you know national park so governments can the central government can declare national parks that can be within the sanctuary and a collector is appointed by the central government to administer the area declared as a sanctuary and this is what is the you know third feature now let us uh, discuss about the fourth uh, feature the wildlife protection act provides for the constitution of bodies to be established under this act such as national and state board for wildlife central zoo authority and national tiger conservation authority so these you know uh, bodies can be established according to wildlife protection act number 5 hunted wild animals if suppose other than vermin i am talking about not all the species other than vermin if they are hunted and animal articles or meat of wild animals and ivory imported into india and an article made from such ivory shall be considered as the property of the government no person can have authority it becomes the property of the government if any other species that is apart from the vermin so with this uh, we have completed all the features now let us understand various bodies constituted under this act so there are five bodies number 1 national board for wildlife number 2 state board for wildlife number 3 central zoo authority number 4 national tiger conservation authority and number 5 wildlife crime control bureau so first let us understand what is national you know board for wildlife so as the name says it is national so i you know it is uh, part of the central government so as per the act the central government of india shall constitute the national board for wildlife and what is the purpose of this this serves as an apex body for the review of all wildlife related matters and for the approval of projects in and around national parks and sanctuaries so if there are any uh, you know projects that are underway nearing uh, you know in and around uh, these national parks and sanctuaries it becomes the you know discretion of the uh, you know national board for wildlife to actually approve or disapprove the same and the nbwl that is national board for wildlife is uh, chaired by the prime minister of the country and he is responsible for promotion and conservation and development of wildlife and forests and the minister of environment forest and climate change is the vice chairperson of the board so chairperson is prime minister and vice chairperson is the minister of environment forest and climate change so with this uh, let us start understanding more details about the same the board is just an advisory so it cannot uh, do anything uh, uh, you know else apart from advisory so this is advisory in nature and can only advise the government on policy making for conservation of wildlife so it uh, with respect to various policy makings so this board can actually advise to the government uh, there will be one standing committee also the standing committee constitutes uh, this uh, board actually constitutes a standing committee for the purpose of approving all the projects falling within the protected wildlife area or within the 10 kilometers of the same so as i told you before the projects that are falling under this particular uh, you know board or protected wildlife area are within the 10 kilometers so this is the discretion of this particular board or the standing committee and the committee is chaired by the minister of environment forest and climate change i am talking about this standing committee not the board the standing committee is chaired by the minister of environment forest and climate change so with this let us understand the second board that is state board for wildlife so as the name says so the state government come into the picture here the state governments are responsible for the constitution of the state board of wildlife the chief minister of the states or union territories is the chairperson of the board obviously the board advises the government or the state government in the selection and management of area to be declared as protect, protected areas they can actually you know give suggestions to the government or advises to the advises to the government in the matters of selection and management of the areas that are supposed to be declared as protected the formulation of policy for protection and conservation of wild policy so if there are any policy decisions once again in the formulation of these policies they can actually advise the government and any other matter relating to the amendment of any schedules so this is again 
the board that comes into picture. So the third one is Central Zoo Authority. As the name says, it takes care of zoos in the country. The act provides for the constitution of Central Zoo Authority consisting of total 10 members, including the chairperson and member secretary. So the, there are actually 10 members among which there will be a chairperson and there will be a member secretary as well. The environment minister is the chairperson and the authority provides recognition to zoos and it is also tasked with uh, regulating zoos across the country. So any regulations that are made across uh, the country, the it is the discretion of the central zoo authority. And it also lays down uh, guidelines and uh, prescri prescri prescribes rules under which animals may be transferred among zoos nationally uh, or and internationally. So whenever there is a migration or transfer transfer of uh, you know animals or different species across nationally or internationally, so it is once again Central Zoo Authority that gives guidelines or you know prescribes rules for the same. So with this, let's go to the fourth uh, you know authority that is National Tiger Conservation Authority. So it is there in the name itself. It takes care of our tiger conservation. So following the recommendations of the Tiger Task Force. The National Tiger Conservation Authority was constituted in 2005 for strengthening tiger cons you know, conservation. The union government minister is the chairperson of the National Tiger Conservation Authority and the state environment minister is the vice chairperson of the same. The central government on the recommendations of NTCA declares an area as tiger reserve. So this can actually give recommendations to the government after which you know, the NTCA, the central government on the recommendations of NTCA declares an area as tiger reserve. So more than 50 wildlife sanctuaries in India have been uh, designated as tiger reserves and are protected under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So there are more than 50 wildlife sanctuaries in India that are designated for tiger reserve. So next, the last uh, board is Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. As the name says, it takes care of both the criminal activities related to wildlife. The act provided for the constitution of wildlife crime you know, control bureau to combat organized wildlife crimes in the country. So the bureau has its headquarters in New Delhi. It is mandated to collect and collate. Collate is nothing but a kind of a compilation of the data, intelligence related to organized wildlife crime activities and uh, disseminate the same disseminate the same is uh, to hand over the same documents to the state or to the to uh, you know apprehend the uh, criminals apprehend is nothing but punishing or arresting the criminals the establish a uh, central uh, centralized wildlife crime data book so they also have uh, you know centralized uh, wildlife crime data book and they actually assist the governments to ensure success in prosecutions related to the wildlife crimes and they can also advise the government of India on issues relating to wildlife crimes having national and international ramifications, relevant policy and laws. So this can also act as an advisory body to the government of India in the matters related to national and international ramifications and relevant policies and laws. So that completes all the you know boards of this particular act. Now we have come to the last part of our presentation wherein we will be listing down different species that come under different schedules of the act. So this is schedule number one. You can just pause the video and look in for various species that are put under schedule one. So as I told you, schedule one, it is actually most of them are endangered species. So there is nothing to understand here. You can just pause the video and go through the species. And now here schedule two. So once again, these are the animals under this list are also accorded high protection with the prohibition on their trade. And some of the animals listed under this particular schedule are here. So you can just pause the video and go through the species. And now let's go to schedule three and four. So these species that are uh, not endangered and they are included in uh, schedule three and four. And animals protected under uh, schedule three are here and animals protected under schedule four are here. So once again, you, you can pause the video and go through the same. And uh, schedule four, uh, five, so it includes only four species of wild animals, common crows, fruit bats, rats, and mice. They are considered as vermin, they can be hunted. And schedule six, these actually uh, the plant species. Uh, it provides for regulation in cultivation of specified uh, plants and restriction in possession, sale and transportation. 
both cultivation and trade of uh, specific plants can only be carried out with prior permission of competent authority and plants protected under this particular schedule are here so you can just pause the video and go through the same so this is uh, these are all the details of the wildlife protection act so if you have any questions you can definitely put in comments box we will be more than happy to revert thank you thank you thanks for watching namaskar